Hey there, it's Christmas in July. My name is Sandra, and you're watching The Schwoven's Nest. This episode is also part of Timber Tuesday, where I use mostly wood items to create. This first project is using this house shape. I got it at Dollarama, and they had a few other different sizes that would go in between, so sort of like a nesting set of houses. I've got some of my garden stakes that are wooden and a piece of 2 by 4 Using the wood garden stakes, I'm going to cut pieces that are about an inch longer than the roof line, and I'm going to glue on four of them. I wanted this to have a little bit of a ledge on the outside and look like a real house. I'm going to measure the second part of the roof a little bit longer because I want it to cover up that peak at the top. Otherwise, I'm going to have like a tiny little V-shape. So I wanted to camouflage that. So this one will be about a millimeter longer than the other side. I'm using these miter shears. They're my favorite wood cutting product. So you'll see me use these a lot. I've got them linked down in my description box. Now that the roof is complete, I decided to add a couple of pieces to the bottom to make this look a little bit like a crate. I just thought it would be a little bit more rustic to have a house crate. So I'm going to do the same thing, mark off my pieces, cut them with the miter shears, and then hot glue them onto the edges. There's a little bit of raw edge where I did all of the cutting, so I'm just going to go over with a fine grit sandpaper from the Dollar Tree and clean that up a little bit. Then I'm going to wipe it down really well because I don't want any dust getting in the way of my paint and stain. Moving on to that chunk of wood that I have. This is actually a 2x6, not a 2x4. I'm going to do the same thing, just sand down any of the rough edges. I'm going to glue the house right on top of this wood piece and that's going to give it a nice tall base. Wood pieces are never straight so I'm going to put on these one inch half round beads, give it some feet, it's going to add more stability and it's also going to look super cute. Walnut is my favorite color of stain. I'm just using this little bottle from Americana. It's a gel stain, so it's water-based. I'm going to dilute it with a little bit of water and then start applying it to the roof. I decided to apply it with a paintbrush just so I could get a nice even finish. I'm not going to wipe any of this off because I really like the color and because there's some extra water in it, it's going to soak right into the wood so it won't leave any residue behind. I'm also going to do the base and the beads and the two slats that I have glued on either side. I'm going to use some white paint that I've created into a chalk paint using some talc. I've got that recipe listed down in my description box if you're interested. And I'm going to give this one really good coat. This type of chalk paint that I'm using covers really well with one coat, especially when you're using raw wood. I'm going to be very careful around the edges because I don't want to muck up any of the stain. But you can see that white and brown combination is going to be absolutely beautiful. To style the house, I added a layer of burlap, some bottle brush trees, and I think this turned out simple, rustic, but really elegant. Today's video is part of the Christmas in July DIY challenge hosted by my sweet friend Sonia over at Domestic Diva DIY. I'm also hosting with her so you will see a playlist full of Christmas inspiration. Please make sure you hit that playlist. Also go down and check out Sonia's channel. I'll have everything linked down in my description box. My second project is repurposing this wood panel frame that never got completed and I'm just going to remove these berries and then get started. Using some buffalo check wrapping paper I'm going to cut a piece out that will fit right inside the wood panel and that will be my background. 
I'm cutting the rest of it with my paper trimmer to just get some nice clean lines. This is a great investment if you work with paper a lot. I used to scrapbook, so that's why I have this one, but I would definitely be investing in one if I didn't have one. I'm just going to use a glue stick to put it in. The idea I have for this frame is to make it look like the frame itself is galvanized. So I'm taking some of this Dollar Tree cookie sheet and I'm going to cut out some strips that I'll be able to glue around the frame. Now when you're working with this, be very careful because those edges that are cut do tend to get fairly sharp. So just be aware and make sure you don't cut yourself. I cut the piece to the exact length that I need. Then I'm going to fold it over the side, make sure I have enough to go all the way down to the bottom. And then I'll just be using the edges of the frame to make some creases and tell me where I need to trim. I'm using one of Dollar Tree's little scoring tools and making lines where I need to trim. So I'm going to make sure that I have enough of the material to go inside the frame. And then I'm going to do an angled cut to make it look like a miter joint at each corner. I'm leaving this in regular time so you can see where I'm trimming. So the first score lines are just to get rid of the excess on the sides. Then I'm going to lay it back down onto the frame and push the material in the center down so I can see where I need to trim that. Once I trim off the excess, then I'll use the scoring tool one more time just to mark off where the mitered corners need to be. I'm just going to use hot glue to glue this down. Remember when you're working with metal, it's always good to put the hot glue on the wood or the non-metal part of your project because the metal will dry the hot glue super fast. So I'm just going to place the hot glue there, press it down, making sure I don't burn my fingers because again, that hot glue is hot and the metal conducts heat. So it makes it super warm when you're working with it. So just be careful when you're working with metal and hot glue together. I'm going to do the same thing with the sides, making sure that they're nice and secure. And then I'll just continue making these foil pieces for each other side of the frame. I love how this frame turned out. I think this idea was amazing, but it's really super shiny. So I'm taking a stippling brush. It's just a round chip brush. It's my favorite brush to do this with. And I'm going to use some dark gray paint and just go all the way around it, just muting the shininess a little bit. But I do want some of that to peek through. This little oval round came from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to give it one good coat of white chalk paint, including the sides. Once the paint was dry, I went with my pencil and wrote out the words Farmhouse Christmas in two different fonts. And this is just a freehand font. I've done this enough times that I think I know how I want things to look. So I just go ahead and go for it. And if you're not comfortable going for it or you feel your handwriting isn't that great, you can definitely print something like this off on paper and use the pencil transfer method. I'm using a fine point paint pen that's oil based in black and they're from CraftSmart. Using a small chip brush and some of the gray paint that's left over in my bucket, I'm just going to give this a little bit of a dry brushing around the edges, making it a little more rustic. To embellish the sign, I'm using these gorgeous pine picks that I got from Amazon. I'll have the link down in my description box. I'm probably going to get some more for Christmas decorations this year. I absolutely love them. They're gorgeous and so realistic. I did cut them down a little bit as you can see me doing here because I wanted smaller pieces for this DIY. I'm using a tumbling tower block to glue down right in the center of the frame and then I'll be gluing the little farmhouse Christmas sign right on top of that. This is going to raise it up a little bit and give me some space to put some of the pine greenery underneath. Using the pip berries that I pulled off this project at the very beginning, I'm going to hot glue some of them all the way around the sign and this little project is done.
My last project is using this paper plate holder. It's made from wicker, so it looks like a wicker plate. I'm going to use the same stain, which is that walnut gel stain in Americana, and it is watered down. I'm using my chippy brush that I love to use, and I'm just going to stain mostly the top half of this, but you can see that the color is darkening up a little bit, and I do like that much better. I've got this white linen fabric that is a tea towel. I can't remember where I got these. It might have been Dollarama, but I'm kind of thinking it might have been one of my grocery stores. Anyhow, they're really pretty and they're really delicate. And I wanted to use this as a cover to cover the bottom part and make a pocket. I'm going to fold down the top edge twice and just use hot glue to secure it in place. I wanted it to have a little bit of a fold over cuff. I just thought that would add to the charm of the pocket. I used to do a lot of scrapbooking when my kids were young, so I have a bunch of these stamps, and would you believe I still have some of this ink? The ink's got to be at least 15 or 18 years old, but it's still usable. It's awesome. Anyhow, I'm going to take this ink and just go along the stamp. These are just rubber stamps that you can purchase. I think this set came from Stampin' Up! And I'm going to stamp these images right onto the fabric. So I'm just going to place it down and hold it there until I'm pretty sure that I've got all of the areas pressed down and then I'll release it and see what it looks like. I'm going to do the same thing with this little tree. It's so pretty, it's just so whimsical. And I'm gonna just place one of them on either side of the little snowman. If you can figure that out, these are a bunch of little snowmen. They're a little bit lighter than I would have liked them to be. So I do end up going over it really carefully, making sure I match everything up and it does get darker. Then I've also got a little happy holiday stamp that I'm going to put underneath. I'm just going to use hot glue to glue the fabric onto the wicker. I'm going to start with both of the sides, making sure that I have it placed exactly where I want it to be. Then I'll flip it over and starting at the bottom, I'll glue that up first and then just gently fold over, sort of like I'm upholstering a cushion or a chair, something like that. So you're just gonna fold it over and make any cuts that you need to to get rid of any of the bulk. I added a simple shoestring bow using some of this ticking stripe ribbon that I got from Michaels and hot glued it to the very top of the little snowman, stuffed it with a little bit of holiday greens and this project is also done. I love it. I think the little snowmen add a sweet little whimsical and rustic feel to this project. I hope you enjoyed these three Christmas in July DIYs. They're rustic and simple and so easy to recreate. If you did, I would love it if you could hit that thumbs up button, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my videos, send me a comment down below, and of course, hit that subscribe button. That black arrow will show you exactly where to click. Don't forget to check out the playlist to get more Christmas inspiration. Bye for now.